Come on, friends. Come on. From the bottom of my heart, I plead with you. Give it all to Jesus. Let him send you away to win the lost and build the kingdom. Scripture in Luke's Gospel, chapter 6, and I'd like to read to you from verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. What an example. What an example to the church he came to birth and lead. That Jesus was continually going aside into the mountain to pray. This time he had a particular purpose for his prayer. And it says, and it, and it says in verse 13, And when it was day, he called unto him, his disciples and of them he chose twelve we also named apostles so we've got this incredible picture of the Lord Jesus up in the mountain all night long and a good many of his disciples camped on the slopes of the hill waiting for him to come down in the morning makes you wonder if we're allowed to speculate how many of them were praying in support for him and how many of them just laid down and went to sleep as normal but when morning was Kate was come it says he called the disciples to him and from their number he chose 12 this was one of the most important moments in church history or in actual fact in human history because Jesus had gone aside to ask his father who should be the 12 men that he gave as apostles to the world and uh, and this is an incredibly critically important moment in history as Jesus read out these names Simon Andrew James John Philip Bartholomew Matthew Thomas James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon called Zelotes, Judas, James, Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. How sad. Twelve times Jesus called. One by one these men stood to their feet on that grassy bank. They had been appointed by the creator of the universe. To be the foundation apostles for the church of Jesus Christ. Apostles are very, very important. Now Ephesians 4.11 is actually repeated in 1 Corinthians 12.28. But when Paul writes to the Corinthian church, he words it slightly differently. And instead of saying he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, he says in his letter to the Corinthians and he gave first of all apostles second 
prophets third teachers and that of course includes pastors pastor teachers but first he now he now puts a number of importance upon each of the callings first apostles now the apostle is the most important of all spiritual ministry gifts the apostle stands apart and the reason for that is is if you just take a quick look at all of them without an evangelist the pastor wouldn't have anybody to pastor without pastors the evangelist wouldn't have anybody to look after the converts that he brought to Christ but an apostle is a gift to humankind or is a combination of both pastor and evangelist and very often prophet is not held on to by a local church but is deliberately sent away and the the apostolic gift a, the apostle is somebody who doesn't just feel a burden for a particular town or city or locality or even nation an apostle is somebody who feels a burden for the entire world the world is his parish and he is sent away from his locality and uh, and he is sent out to establish the kingdom of God around the globe by preaching that's the calling the responsibility is both massive and demanding and because of the price that is required of him in commitment and sacrifice unfortunately the ministry gift of the apostle which is declared to be the number one ministry has become the most neglected ministry because unfortunately the church has deteriorated to a place where people don't want that kind of commitment and that kind of surrender but I want to say to you dear friends today that without the world vision of a true apostle or of true apostles I should say the church will die we can't abandon something that Jesus was given when he rose from the dead and took captivity captive and, and and then he gave these gifts to men you can't say we don't want them without risking jeopardizing the entire structure and well-being of the church of Jesus Christ apostles are the driving force behind world evangelism apostles are pioneers they go out and everywhere they go they found churches the these men that Jesus read out early in the morning there on the mountainside those men those apostles they went out into the nations of the earth and in the in the years that followed and they founded many many churches around the world the apostle can I say this friends because I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding here sometimes the apostle is more than an itinerant preacher who goes round to different churches bringing them a word an apostle is the winner of the lost the establisher of those he wins into churches and the founder 
of the kingdom of God everywhere he goes around the world W. F. P. Burton who I remember with such deep affection was a 20th century apostle to Central Africa he was sent out by God into Central Africa in 1914 and he won many thousands of souls for Christ in fact the mission that he formed around himself as God guided him and directed him and supplied to him the people that he needed was a mission that formed more than 2,000 churches and the results of the ministry of this amazing man are still seen today in Congo in Central Africa after his sudden death in 1971 at the age of 85 years and it's very interesting to note that he was given six months to live when he was 59 God God had his hand upon this man's life but following his death um, a little letter was found pinned to the wall of his home written in this characteristically beautiful handwriting he had tiny neat handwriting which looked like it had been printed it was amazing and uh, it was pinned to his office wall and this is what it said it said Lord when thou seest that my work is done let me not linger on with failing powers down the weary hours a worthless worker in a world of work but with the word just bid me home and I will come what a wonderful godly servant of Jesus Christ he was and his life and the life of men like James Salter and Teddy Hodgson and others who worked with him had a powerful impact upon my life. Their commitment, their devotion, their challenge formed my young life and is with me to this very day. I'd like to say that the Apostle is validated by the miraculous in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 Paul writes these words he says I persevered in demonstrating among you the marks of a true apostle including signs and wonders and miracles may I invite you my friend to read through the Acts of the Apostles and wonder at the indisputable miracles that were done through the Apostles. Amazing. Beginning at, in, in Acts chapter 3 when James, when Peter and John went into the temple at the hour of prayer, went through the gate beautiful and saw, saw the cripple sitting there. J Peter said to him, silver and gold have I none? But such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he put out his hand and he lifted him up and his ankle bones and his legs came, received strength and the man went leaping and dancing and shouting into the temple they said that a notable miracle hath been done we cannot deny and read on through that amazing book of accounts and see the dead being raised lives being changed as the apostles left their mark in miracles and how desperately friends the church of Jesus Christ needs miracles today and I don't mean 
the miracles that God graciously sometimes bestows upon us behind closed doors when he heals his servants or takes away their pain and shows us compassion no friends I'm talking about miracles that change societies I'm talking about miracles like Jesus did Jesus the greatest apostle of all round the towns and cities of the Galilee healed the sick made cripples walk open blind eyes they were indisputable evidences and Jesus used the miracles to attract the thousands and then when they came he preached to them the truth he preached to them the gospel of repentance and this is what the church needs today not the counterfeit miracles whipped up by charlatans or trying to line their pockets no friends we need miracles which change communities because the public sees the miracle the man in the street knows that the miracle has been done not something claimed within the walls of a church but something demonstrated by the power of God to all men and women everywhere the Lord once sent us to a little place way up in upstate New York a little place called Cherry Creek and uh, and we arrived at this little village we were going to take the village hall for a few days of services and see what God did we were definitely directed to go there by him and the morning after we arrived the lady in the house where I was staying the phone rang and she picked up the phone and she said yes just a minute and then she turned to me and she said John it's for you and I was thinking that it was somebody calling from England and I picked up the phone and it was somebody I had never met a woman living in that village of Cherry Creek and she said that she had a, a relative who was in very 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 serious condition mentally she was just gone she was a complete wreck of a human being she'd been to doctors psychiatrists men's mental institutions and nobody could help her and uh, and she said we wondered if you could perhaps help her and I said well we'll see her and we'll ask the Lord what we can do and so I remember later on that day mounting the wooden steps outside an, a, an old farmhouse there was snow everywhere it was deep in snow and we we knocked the snow from our shoes and went inside into this little one room at the top of a farmhouse and then in a few minutes they brought this girl Darcy into the room she was only about 18 years old and her hair was hanging her head was bowed and her hair was hanging in front of her face and we spoke to her but she didn't reply we spoke to her again and asked her what her problem was but she made an attempt to speak but it was impossible because they were not they were completely incoherent and she was just in a wreck and we couldn't talk to her we couldn't ask her what she needed we couldn't help her it was a terrible situation and eventually we just said Lord please show us what to do and the Lord showed us what to pray he just told us what to pray just a simple little prayer so I remember hesitatingly nervously praying the little prayer that the Lord had given us to pray and I prayed it and said Amen and instantly this young lady pulled back the hair from her face she smiled and she began to talk to us normally I mean it was just 
It was just wonderful. We introduced her to Jesus and she gave her life to Jesus and God filled her with the Holy Spirit. And that little farmhouse room became pregnant with the power of the Holy Ghost. And that night was the first night of our little campaign in the village hall. We had no idea how many would come, maybe three or four maybe 10 who knows I think there were about a dozen people there if I remember rightly plus our little team and uh, and we're waiting for the service to start and then I hear the door open at the back and there's Darcy shining hand in hand with her husband who had reached the end of his tether he didn't know what to do he, he just thought he had to quit the marriage because because he couldn't stand it any longer and I preached the gospel that night and when I gave an appeal Darcy's husband immediately came forward and knelt at the front and I went down to him and I said can I help you what is it that you really want and he said what I really want is whatever Darcy got this afternoon that's what I want and he prayed the sinner's prayer and the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him and he began to speak in languages that he had never learned because the power of God was upon him the next night a whole row of people family members came and they answered the appeal and they said, whatever Darcy's got the other afternoon, this is what we want. And God saved them all and filled them all with the Holy Ghost. And a church, a church was established within two, three days. Why? Because of one astonishing, undeniable miracle and we are living in a day friends when the church has got to answer for why we do not see any miracles you say oh but we do see in our church we see miracles no come on friends i'm talking about community transforming miracles i'm talking about galilee miracles i'm talking about blind people seeing and cripples walking and continuing to walk the church must answer <clears throat> why is it that we no longer see demonstrations of god's power some of us were brought up being told about what had happened through smith wigglesworth and stephen and george jeffries and others but friends that was in a bygone day I want to see God move now don't you I want to see God do miracles now miracles that will bring thousands into his kingdom and we must take a look at this and stop making excuses now listen I need to read a scripture to you it's in Matthew chapter 13 Matthew chapter 13 and verse 58 and it says this well verse 57 says Jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor save in his own country and in his own house and he did not there many mighty works because of their unbelief he did not many this is jesus we're talking about apostle number one we're talking about the king of apostles he could do their no mighty work because of their unbelief so even the hands of the apostles are bound by the unbelief of the church and you know what that word unbelief really means? It means disobedience, 
through the disobedience of the church now I've I've seen it friends from being a boy I've seen preachers shouting at congregations come on believe God come on we've got to have faith if we're going to see this person heal we must believe we must have faith we must believe 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 and I've believed 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 I see the person prayed for and go back exactly the same they can't shout faith into people you can't bombard people with a command to believe they either believe or they don't believe they either have faith or they don't have faith and it comes friends how do you get it how do you get that kind of faith it comes by relationship not by religion but by relationship you can only believe in somebody that you trust and you can only trust somebody who you know you've got to know him we've got to know in whom we have believed and then we will obey him because if we love him we will want to please him right if we love him we will want to live to please him and that's faith living it takes faith to live right and you'll never see a miracle if you haven't got the faith to live right because if you haven't got the faith to live right you haven't got the faith for miracles may God help us not to undermine what he has planned he has planned that apostles be the carriers of miracles let us not hinder who they are and what they're there for by by our unbelief and our refusal to obey that which is written in God's word and there is so much I can't get into this now but there is so much going on in the church of Jesus Christ which is in direct opposition to the word because we're compromising with this modern godless society we compromise at our peril I want to see thirdly that the apostle is willing to suffer with his Lord Jesus said to Ananias when he was sending him to Saul and uh, Ananias was understandably nervous about going to see this man who had the blood of Christians on his hands and the Lord said to Ananias you go I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake and looking further on in history as we read in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23 we read these words are they the ministers of Christ I speak as a fool I am more this is Paul in labors more abundant in stripes that means in being whipped in stripes above measure in prison more frequent in deaths often of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one three times was I beaten with rods once was I stoned three times I suffered shipwreck a night and a day I have been in the deep in journeyings often in perils of waters in perils of robbers in perils by my own countrymen in perils by the heathen in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the sea in perils among false brethren in weariness and painfulness 
in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things which are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. But you see, Paul was willing to suffer. I mean, this is a horrendous list. We just read over it quickly, but if you pause and think about everything he went through. But he was willing. That's why late in his life he could write to the Philippians and say that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, how he loved him. He loved him so much that he actually wanted to share in the fellowship of his sufferings. True apostles, friends, are willing to suffer. And it's and it, that's why it's good for us to take a little bit of a look at the history of these men that Jesus chose that day or that night in the night of prayer with his father as each one of them one by one laid down their lives in the cause of the kingdom in the cause of their love for their saviour I want us to see fourthly the apostle is willing to bear the spiritual burden of his calling the apostle has the passion of an evangelist but he also carries the burden of the care of God's people that's why it says in 2 Corinthians 11 28 beside those things which are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches he didn't just breeze into a city and spend a little while there and win people for Jesus and then leave them and forget them he carried the burden he carried the care of them and um, I'll never forget the morning that we left Cherry Creek they all came out that little fledgling church as we pulled away in our snow covered vehicle and I looked back through the rear window of the car and saw them standing in the street waving their hands it was the most difficult thing I ever did to leave them I wanted to stay and look after them and that's the heart of a shepherd and this, friends, is what an apostle should be. David Canistraki wrote these words. I'm going to read them to you. An apostle does not just set up an empire of churches over which he reigns and from which he receives glory and honour. Instead, the charge of all the local churches that God gives him becomes a gut-wrenching, intensely emotional, heartfelt, passionate ministry of life to precious to passionate ministry of life to precious souls. It is an awesome responsibility. It is not an arm's length transaction. The apostle must feel the very heartbeat, the pulse of the church, and be in touch with the lives of its people. And I say, Amen, David. We gotta care, friends. So I want to ask you in closing, are you willing to answer the call? Whatever that call might be, it is of course easier for someone with an apostolic call inside them it's easier for them to call themselves pastors 
and shut out the rest of the world and I'm sorry and maybe it's a difference of calling I don't know I'm so, but I'm sorry but I can't understand these people these church leaders these Christian leaders who who seem to just care for their own little flock and their own little community and have no real burden for anything beyond their boundaries I, I don't get it but like I say maybe there's an explanation for that but it's, it's easy for somebody who's got an apostles, but apostle calling burning in their hearts to decide to call themselves pastors and shut out the rest of the world. They won't be required to leave their homes, to leave their wives, to leave their children for months and end and dig spiritual trenches in, in some unknown part of the vineyard they won't be required to engage in that which is unglamorous but costly no it's safer to say well I'm a pastor surprising isn't it but nearly all ministry gifts now call themselves pastors it's easier friends if it's if you're finding it easier to be a pastor and ignore that which is deep down inside your heart then may the Lord stir you and convict you and have mercy upon you the world needs apostles don't tell me God has stopped giving them the biggest lie friends is to say that they were for just for a, a bygone age we need apostles now and and I believe they're out there I believe we've got apostles hiding in church congregations and I believe that there are apostles who are amongst the enemies of Christ well that's what Paul was remember Saul of Tarsus he Jesus said to Ananias he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and before the children of Israel. Who is this man who was pursuing Christians to prison and having them put to death? Who is he? He's a called one. So they're out there in the world. They're out there in the church. And I plead with you today to stop fighting God let the words of James Salter come ringing down the years lay your all on the altar for God is calling for you for me lay your all on the altar for him this moment the master obey friends God is calling you this is apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers and you and maybe you are one of them but you don't want it you don't want the commitment you've seen too much you've seen the pain friends we're doing it for him please surrender please come to him remember that old hymn we used to sing here the Lord of harvest sweetly calling who will go and work for me today who will go and tell the lost and dying who will point them to the narrow way speak my Lord speak to me speak and thou be quick to answer thee speak my Lord speak to me speak and I will answer Lord send me millions now in sin and shame 
are dying. Listen to their sad and bitter cry. Oh, hasten, brother, hasten to the rescue. Quickly, man, answer, master, here am I. And listen, soon the time for reaping will be over. Soon we'll gather for the harvest home. Oh, may the Lord of harvest smile upon us. May we hear his blessed child well done. So speak, my Lord. Please speak to me, speak and I'll be quick to answer thee, speak my Lord, speak to me, speak and I will answer, Lord, send come on friends come on from the bottom of my heart I plead with you give it all to Jesus let him send you away to win the lost and build the kingdom. I love you all. God bless you.